In this video, we're going to take a look at Battlefield 2042's graphic settings and compare them to make the most optimized setting. And it starts now. Battlefield 2042 is a first-person shooter which was released in October of 2021. A year and a half after its release, the game is slowly picking up players again. I personally love this franchise as I started playing the game during Battlefield 3, and it gave me some of the best gaming memories I have to date. So today, we're going to test every setting the game has and compare them from low to ultra and make the best settings in terms of visual fidelity and FPS numbers. Do take note that the entirety of the test was done on an offline co-op server. And for the complete specs used for this test, a list will be available down in the description. Starting off with Field of View or FOV. This setting allows you to adjust the extent of the observable view that is seen on the display. Increasing your FOV would widen your vision and decreasing it would narrow down your vision. And generally, increasing the FOV would take up performance as more textures are being rendered by the GPU. And from our test, the difference of FPS from 50 FOV to 105 FOV was around 4 to 6%. I personally set this to around 93 or 98, but your preference might differ. And I do need to mention that setting a higher FOV could help you with motion sickness. So consider setting this to around 90 plus if you're experiencing motion sickness. ADS field of view determines whether a separate FOV will be applied when you aim down your sights. When turned on, weapon sights will be closer to the number you set your FOV in, so this setting is directly affected by the FOV you used. When turned off, the default FOV will be applied. Difference on performance was negligible, so this will boil down on your preference. I personally set this to on. Moving on to motion blur. Motion blur refers to the visual blur that is added to objects when you're moving around, giving a sense of speed. As seen from our test, motion blur is very noticeable when you're moving around, and the performance gap from 0 to 100 motion blur was around 3 to 5%. I am going to recommend setting motion blur to 0, as this might give you a disadvantage during PvP. It's hard to spot enemies when your surroundings are blurred out. We now go to Chromatic Aberration. This setting distorts the colors around objects and makes edges fade away for a more cinematic feeling. As a result, objects become distorted and blurry. Performance was virtually identical between enabled and disabled, but I would recommend turning Chromatic Aberration off for a clearer image. Vignette is an effect that simulates the darkening in real-world camera lenses. This is commonly seen when you're suppressed by enemy fire and when deploying your parachute. Performance was virtually identical between off and on, but I would recommend setting this to off. Next up is texture quality. This setting lets you adjust the quality and clarity of all the textures in the game. The higher this setting is, the sharper surfaces will look. This was a little bit tricky to test as you need to restart the game when changing settings in order for it to take effect. And from our test, there is hardly any FPS difference between low to ultra, although VRAM consumption greatly increased as the settings got higher. I would recommend setting this to medium, but GPUs with low VRAM should always set this to low. Moving on to texture filtering. This setting allows you to tweak the sharpness of textures when viewing at a certain angle. And like texture quality, I needed to restart the game every time I changed the setting in order for it to take effect. And from our testing, the drop of FPS from low to ultra was around 9 to 11%, and medium settings was the perfect balance between good FPS and decent visuals. So I would recommend using medium here. Next we have lighting quality. This controls the quality and details of various lights and shadows in the environment. But from our testing, I noticed differences primarily on shadows. From low to ultra, shadows become sharper and more pronounced. Performance from low to ultra also had a difference of 10 to 16% depending on the situation, while low to medium had a difference of 3 to 5% while looking a lot better compared to low. 
I would suggest setting this to medium. Next on our list is shadow filtering. Battlefield 2042 uses two types of shadow filtering, PCF and PCSS. From our testing, PCF makes shadows look sharper while PCSS makes shadows look softer. Difference of performance between the two was around 3 to 5% with PCSS having better FPS. So I would suggest using PCSS but if you prefer shadows looking sharper, feel free to use PCF. Effects quality controls the quality of various explosions and other particles like fires and ballistics. This was tricky to test as you need to restart the game in order for the different setting to take effect. I also saw barely any difference in visuals going from low to ultra. There is also no huge performance loss going from low to ultra as the difference was only around 3 to 5%. So I'm going to recommend setting this to either high or medium. But if you encounter stuttering especially when a lot of explosions occur, I suggest setting this to low. We now go to post-process quality. This applies visual quality improvements after the main texture rendering is done. And from our testing, I noticed subtle differences on floors and reflections when looking at it from a certain angle. Performance difference going from low to ultra was around 7 to 11%. So I would suggest setting this to low as the visual improvements are not worth the performance loss. Moving on to mesh quality. This setting adjusts the clutter that gets rendered when looking from a distance. The higher the mesh quality is, the higher the polygon count and the more detailed the objects can be made to appear. From our test, I mainly noticed differences in foliage when looking from a distance. Performance drop from low to ultra was around 3 to 4%. So if you want to spot enemies easier from a distance, I would suggest setting this to low. But if you want more details on faraway objects, set this to ultra. Next on our list is terrain quality. This adjusts the level of detail of ground objects like rocks, soil, and mud. Setting this to low will make ground objects look flat while ultra settings make ground objects stand out. Performance drop from low to ultra was around 3 to 5%, so I'm going to suggest setting this to high as this adds depth to the visuals of the game at the cost of very little resource. Undergrowth quality adjusts the amount of vegetation seen on the ground. It also affects the visual details of shrubs and grasses. On ultra, grasses and shrubs are dense making it hard to see anything beyond it. And from our test, the performance from low to ultra decreased at a staggering amount of 35% in certain conditions. So I would suggest setting this to low to make things easier to see and for higher FPS. We now go to anti-aliasing post-processing. This setting is used to remove jagged edges of objects in the game. Battlefield 2042 uses two types of anti-aliasing. Temporal low and temporal high. And from our testing, edges of objects on temporal high looks better and more defined compared to temporal low. Performance difference between the two was around 1 to 3%, and I'm going to recommend using TAA high. Moving on to ambient occlusion. This setting gives more depth to shadows by adding soft shadows into already existing and intersecting shadows. Setting this to HBAO full will make shadows look darker while turning it off will make shadows lighter. Performance drop going from off to HBAO full was around 2 to 4%. So I'm going to recommend using HBAO to give shadows more depth at the cost of minimal resource. Next up is high fidelity objects amount. This controls the amount of soldiers and vehicles that are rendered with the highest levels of fidelity. This was also tricky to test as it was literally impossible for me to simulate the exact scene with the same amount of soldiers and vehicles. But as far as numbers go, there was a difference of 1 to 5% going from low to ultra depending on the situation. So I'm going to suggest setting this to low to save up on some GP resource. DLSS is NVIDIA's proprietary AI upscaling, so don't get confused if DLSS is unavailable if you're using a Radeon or Intel GPU. 
This method of upscaling uses AI to upscale the resolution to provide the highest possible frame rate with minimal compromise. And from our testing, aside from the native resolution, DLSS quality provides the best visuals and performance. The performance gap going from DLSS to DLSS quality was around 22-26%, to 26%, and I suggest using DLSS only when playing at 2560 by 1440 or above resolution. Using DLSS when playing in 1920 by 1080p in my experience is always blurry, but your preference may differ so feel free to test the waters. And finally, we have Ray Traced Ambient Occlusion. This setting makes the areas where two shadows are combined look very realistic, but it comes with a huge performance hit. Also, enabling this will disable the regular ambient occlusion settings. Performance drop going from off to on was around 21 to 30% depending on the scenario. I'm going to make this short and suggest disabling this as the performance drop ain't worth it. Here's a quick rundown of my recommended settings. Now it's time to test our recommended settings and compare it to low and ultra settings. From low settings to our recommended settings, there was only an average decrease of 16% in FPS while looking more closely to high settings. When compared to ultra settings, our recommended setting had better FPS at an average of 55%. With DLSS set to quality, our FPS goes even higher. Again, I would only recommend using DLSS when playing on 1440p or above. Overall, Battlefield 2042 is slowly starting to get better, and I genuinely hope that they fix all the issues so that more players will go back playing the game. And hopefully, these settings will help you top frag every match. On that note, we end our video. If you liked the video, show your support by liking it and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.